Hey everyone, welcome to a Kerbal Space Program tutorial. Today I'm going to be discussing everything in regards to engines. So the biggest question is, is how do you know what engine to use? It's very simple. The majority of people use the engine based off the power. Of course, having a stronger engine, that being 5, 4, 20, 20 thrust, 120 thrust, all the way up to the new NASA engines, the 2500 or 3200, is of course the nicest thing to do, because you have a lot of power. The biggest disadvantage is, of course, it consumes a lot of fuel. That is down to ISP. Think of ISP fuel efficiency. You have fuel efficiency in the atmosphere and fuel efficiency in vacuum, which is in space. The uh, Always you'll notice for the liquid fuel engines, the fuel efficiency in space is always higher than fuel efficiency in atmosphere. That's the way liquid fuel engines work. It's more, much more fuel efficient in space than it is in the atmosphere. So then the second question is, what engine would you choose? So it really depends. You can, of course, use, uh, if you look at, for example, the smaller engines, they're more fuel efficient in regards to the bigger ones, 320 to 370. And if you look at the mainsail, it's 280 to 330. If you look at even the bigger engines, the, the, the NASA engine, the Kerbal, whatever, KR30, it's 320 to 380. So literally, the, uh, the, T, the, T, the T30s, they're on the same efficiency as the NASA engine. But in terms of the mainsail, the mainsail literally died with this NASA pack because there's really no need to use the mainsail anymore because it's less efficient than the actual Kerbal, the NASA engine. I'm going to call it the NASA engine. I'm having really difficulty calling these two engines still the Kerbal engines. So the mainsail died off because the NASA engine, this one, let's say, has much more fuel efficiency in, in the atmosphere and in space. Furthermore, of course, efficiency is, is not always everything. You also have to consider the weight. So if this is 6 tons and this is 6.5 tons, I have a very small difference. I have half a ton difference for nearly double the amount of power, which is 2,500 in regards to 1,500. So literally, I made a sheet here where I literally divide the actual thrust divided by the, the mass. So I get a number. So if you look at the Kerbal engine, I get 384. So every unit of thrust in regards to every unit of mass gives me 384. So now if I look at the main sale, it's 250. So you see, generally speaking, the, the uh, NASA engine is m much better, even in regards to weight. So then the second question is, okay, so why do we use then always the, the nuclear fuel? Because everyone's talking about the nuclear fuel. They're the best thing ever for space for space flights. Yes, they are. For interplanetary, yes, they are. Why? It's very simple. It's because of this number here. You have a very high, nice ISP for vacuum, for in space. You have very fuel efficient engine in space. So, but it's only 60 thrust. So that's why you'll probably come to your answer is why do my planetary transfers in space require so much more time, even though I have a lot of these liquid fuel, uh, these atomic engines. If I have two, three of them, I still got to wait three, four, five, 12 minute burns just just to be able to, to get to where I need to. It's very simple. It's because this, it's, it's only producing 60 thrust. Yes, it's producing it at much, much more fuel efficient uh, ratio because it's in space now. But it's still only 60 thrust. So literally, if you need one of these engines to produce the same amount of the mainsail, you'd, the same thrust of the mainsail, you'd probably need 25 rocket uh, atomic engines to give you the same thrust of a liquid fuel. So if I'm in space and I'm used to flying around in space for some godforsaken reason, you, put a, you have a ship flying in space using the mainsail, and you're enjoying it a lot because wherever you wanted to burn to, to the moon, to Minimus, to Juna, it took you just a few seconds. That's because you had 1,500 thrust. And then for some reason, you decided to switch to the, the atomic engine. And then you realized, crap, why is it taking so long? That's because you changed from 150 thrust to 60 thrust. Don't forget, the thrust doesn't change in space. Only the fuel consumption changes in space. That's pretty much it. Of course, as you ascend out of the atmosphere, the actual ISP increases. So at the bottom, at sea level, I presume, you have 220. And as you go up, you go all the way up to 800. So it is sort of a balancing act. Uh, now, in terms of the jet engines, you don't have in space. You just have ISP. I, I might get this wrong, but I would presume that uh, this is the start of the engine. So you have 546, and at maximum throttle, I would say that's 8,192. Now, again, you'd say, oh, yeah, but the rapier is much more fuel efficient. That is true. But the disadvantage, again, is it's also heavier. So heavier means you need much more uh, 
much more power. It's giving me more power. Let's take a look at the thrust. 225 and 225. So it's not giving me more power. The rapier engine is giving me the same amount of power as the turbojet, yet it's still half a ton more weight, which is nearly a third of its weight. So it's 30% more heavier, giving me the same power. But again, the advantage with this is that it's giving me two modes, so that's why it's heavier. I can go with jet engine, I can go with liquid. And the turbojet is only giving me a jet engine. So you see that there's this sort of balance between everything. There's this balance between ISP, what's the most fuel efficient. There's this also balance between, okay, but where can I fit it? If it's small, if it's big, I really need something small. Maybe I need something very small, very efficient. Yeah, so you really can't use the, the nuclear engine, for example. You don't have the size for that, you know. And then maybe you, you're, you are at a choice that, ah, but I have a lot of space. I can put on 20 of, I don't know. With the new NASA engine, it's literally ridiculous because the only efficient thing, this is 380 in space, 320, is the the Poodle. In some way, it's 270 to 390. The Poodle is more efficient in space by 10 points, only by 10 points. But again, it gives you like ridiculous thrust. The thrust of the Poodle is what? 9, 220. So literally, it's better to go into space with the, the, the large... NASA engine because you get much more thrust. Again, if you're using this to land, tweaking your landing with 2,500 thrust is a little bit difficult if, you're, if your actual spaceship is small. Yeah, so it might be better to stick on a smaller engine because just a small acceleration with this engine with a small ship on top of it will make it fly. So keep that in mind as well. Yeah, so what is a balancing act with the size, with the space? So uh, let's say another another possibility, I don't know, let's say I have a very big, big, large sta starting engine, and this is a 320, so I generally look at all 320s, so here we go. So I draw, let's say, instead of using one of these, because in the atmosphere, it's the same efficiency as these, yeah, but in space, it's less efficient. The, the, the NASA engine is more efficient. But then generally speaking, there is really no need now. Because if it is the same efficiency, then there's really no need. Because another option would be, instead of using two of these, you can use maybe ten of these. Yeah. But if it's the same efficiency, then there's really no need at all. Another thing to keep in mind, there's no need at all in terms of using 10 of these. The only, the only reason to do that would be if you had, for example, the mainsail. Here would be a good reason. The mainsail is much less efficient in, in the atmosphere. It's 280. So instead of the mainsail, one mainsail, if you have the space on your rocket, replace the mainsail with either this or that. It really depends up to you. But of course, you need more of these. So you need the space to have it on your rocket again. The disadvantage, you have more parts. More parts means your computer lags. And if you're not bothered by that, again, you have to think about that you have two types of these. One of them has a little bit more power. One of them has a little bit less power. Okay. And again, one of them has gimbal. Gimbal means the actual nozzle at the bottom can shift a little bit to the left, to the right. So if you zoom in to a rocket or to, to a ship that you're shooting up and you look at the nozzle of an actual engine that has gimbal angle, you'll see the, the actual nozzle is moving left and right very so, very so quickly or very so slightly. Uh, this gives you additional movement and maneuverability and controllability. So if you are using a rocket, let's say with this setup, I drew it up very quickly. With this setup, you have the three circles. Hold on, let's go all the way back. If you're using a rocket, with uh, if you're using a rocket with this setup, if you have the, the center rocket and then you have the asparagus staging, let's say, or if you have just this asparagus staging and this is your rocket altogether. So I would recommend, again, to stick the gimbal in, this, in the center part because the gimbal will allow for more maneuverability with your SAS and then fixed rockets, fixed engines on the side because you don't need them. The gimbal always gives more control. Same thing if you have a spaceship or a space plane stick engines with gimbal in the center and then stick fixed engines on the side because again the gimbal in the center of the ship will allow it to turn anywhere you want much more efficiently and much more better so that's a cool thing to keep in mind yeah i think that's pretty much it that covers literally everything so if we'd have if we go down to the jet engines you have two types of engines you'd be like yeah but why, what's the point of using the basic jet engine uh, in regards to the turbo thrust, yeah, the basic jet engine has 150. That is true thrust in regards to the turbojet. The difference is the turbojet gets much better 
uh, much more thrust at higher altitudes while the basic jet you'll notice if you right click the jet at lower altitudes the actual thrust keeps increasing but if you start going higher the thrust starts decreasing so literally the basic jet is meant for low altitudes and the turbojet is meant for higher so when you start off at, at sea level altitude the engine is literally never going to get this much thrust it'll give you thrust but not give you 250 you might have maximum of 100 100 thrust or 90 thrust at sea level you will it'll not go more you need much more higher altitudes to get that you know so then Again, in, in what scenario would I see this being used in? Generally, if you have, let's say, transport between low altitudes, between two islands, let's say, on one of your planets or even on Kerbal, if you're transporting to those islands offshore, it's very low altitudes. You don't need, you don't need the actual jet engine. Of course, as you see, it's much more fuel efficient at starting speeds, at lower speeds. So literally the fuel efficiency of the jet engine for the lower speeds, you'll never reach higher speeds is much better. So it is as well fuel efficient. So you don't need more power because you'll never reach the 225 at low altitudes with the turbojet, if that makes sense. I do hope it does. So then what's the point of using the solid rocket fuel boosters? If you do, for sure, for now, you figured out that the fuel efficiency in atmosphere and in vacuum is much less than some of the standard liquid jet engines. If we take a look at our standard liquid jet engines, the fuel efficiency is 320, let's say, to 370. And this one, let's say, it's 225 to 204. So it's much worse. But again, the, dis the advantage of this is that the thrust is much more. So I have 250 instead of, let's say, 200 thrust. And as well, the weight. The weight itself, generally, the engine is just the weight of the engine. So if you'd want to so-called create a solid rocket booster or srb stick on a fuel with the same amount of units of fuel as this stick on the engine calculate the actual weight of the fuel with the engine and then you will see if it's worth replacing the srbs i take it that it's not because if you can create your own version of a solid rocket booster then there would be no point of using srbs so in some way srbs as you noticed are very fuel efficient and of course mainly used in atmosphere rarely used in vacuum but there is that probability of it being used in vacuum but generally speaking srbs are perfect to give you that additional uh, power for uh, takeoffs or additional just kick when you need it in the atmosphere generally speaking yeah i think i did cover pretty much everything we did cover hold on we did cover the large engines why you use them the mainsail literally died out with the new with the new engines why the atomic engine is the best for using uh, in in space because of the high isp of 800 though it sucks because it's only 60 thrusts so you're going to need a hell of a lot of them to get anywhere quickly without waiting 20 minutes for every transfer and uh, that's pretty much it the rapier has an advantage of course it uh, it can switch from from lock from liquid to, uh, from liquid to a jet engine, though it is heavier, that's a disadvantage, it's, it's half a ton heavier, which is quite a bit, don't forget, it means you have more mass, it means you need more power, so again, it requires more engines, which, which, which is again a sort of, uh, which is again this whole thing you have to think about, this whole analysis, you know, aerospikes are very popular because they are extremely efficient, in atmosphere and in space it's 390 so 380 you have one of the highest efficiency in atmospheres i think except this one which is a 290 but that gives you a thrust of 120 in regards to 175 so these radial engines aren't that bad at all actually you do have quite a lot of thrust with uh, the isp at 290 with quite a lot of fuel efficiency so generally speaking why then you'd need a fuel efficient one is very simple a uh, fuel efficient engine it means i save up that much more fuel to use it so i'll get more power for example, I'll get 175 thrust for, let's say there's a 10% 10, 10 difference in regards to 380 to 320. So let's lay it as like, I don't know, shooting numbers here. Around a 10% difference in terms of fuel efficiency. So I'll get 10% more time using this rocket before it dies out. Yes, the disadvantage is that I only have 175 thrust to 200 thrust. You know, I have a little bit less thrust than that. But then the question is, is it more fuel efficient or not? If it is, then maybe to use more air spikes. Do I have enough space to use more air spikes? So this is the whole cycle of continuation of design and analysis that you have to do in regards to building up your ship. As always, I hope this guy's helped. Happy gaming. And feel free to leave any of your comments down below in case you have any other questions.